Okay, so today we're going to cover this cemetery across the street in Trustful, the Mount Nebo Cemetery. And I'm a few minutes early on my projected 10 o'clock because, number one, I have to get across Highway 11 uh, to get to the cemetery. It's obviously not a out-in-the-woods lost one. But also, I kind of wanted to cover this, the church that's across the street. Now, this is actually currently the First Presbyterian Church of Trustful. And as we come up here, you'll see the historical marker from Jefferson County for the cemetery in 1860. And the mention that this is the Cave Springs Presbyterian Church, 1899. Now that is not 100% accurate because this church was actually founded as the Cave Springs Presbyterian Church, not at this location, but out wherever Cave Springs is. And then they moved here and after they were founded in 1867 roughly, the um, very next meeting they changed from Cave Springs to the loftier sounding Mount Nebo Presbyterian Church, which is where the cemetery across the street gets its name. And then in 1899, they built this building and this has been added to it. And they changed their name to the First Presbyterian Church of Trustful. Now this building has been altered. This used to actually be two stories tall. And over the years, they have demolished parts of it um, there's a notation in the church records that they bought new wooden pews from the South Highlands Presbyterian Church and uh, they had to buy padding because the wooden pews pinched people in unladylike places, etc. Now, I'm, I'm kind of doing a quick walk around here uh, before we go across the street. Uh, number one, there's this very cool woods out behind this church. Here is a Facebook post that should not offend anybody. Um, this church back here, or this, these woods back here, it goes off and down, and there might be a creek back here. I'm not quite sure because I am not taking my 50-year-old self back there and breaking a leg. Um, this is, like I said, the old part of the church. Here are some steps to a door that used to exist. And you can see the original stone pillars that this part of the building was actually built on. Okay, so, and this would have been the back door. Um, the front door is under that addition that was added. My father has actually been in this church when he delivered flowers here one time way back in the day when he worked at Food Giant. But now we're going to have the adventure of crossing the road. Wonderful old church bell here. And I do believe that does ring because there is a functioning rope, but I'm not going to pull on it. I don't want to hack anybody off. Now let's see if I can get across the road without getting run over. The um, Otherwise y'all are going to get a whole different Facebook Live video. This way, uh, mostly clear. I'm going to make it to the... Oh, shit. <laughs> and then over here. Yada, 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 yada. The things I do to bring this kind of stuff to y'all. Okay. Mount Nebo Cemetery. Hello, Jennifer. All right. This is actually one of the older cemeteries. This was founded in, I believe, 1860... Uh, A's um, all the names here all the graves right here seem to be Anderson so the footstones just have a big A on them granddaughter Susan McDonald 1850 okay so apparently the cemetery is older than 1860 oh no no she was born in 1850 I'm having an issue. Claudia Anderson. Not taps, not taps, but Reveille 
for with him tis dawn of day. Apparently he was a soldier by the inscription. Over here are some more recent markers. Now this cemetery is actually maintained by the Trustful Memorial Cemetery Association. So this cemetery is hardly abandoned. Here is a child that only lived for two days. Here's a stone that is actually sunk into the ground. A recent stone. But it is an 1858 birthday. Yeah, this stone is just in a hole that's been buried, 1875, uh, by leaves. And I don't typically want to step into the hole. This gates. And then here's a more recent bronze for a World War II soldier. Thank you for your service, Mr. Gates. See, here's a fairly recent one, 1997. A gravestone that has someone's nickname on it and carpenter's tools or mason tools. So this may be a mason's grave. I'm not familiar. I've never seen that particular carving on a stone before. Hello, Sammy. And another A footstone for Anderson. Apparently that was the Anderson's thing to put these big A stones down. There's an old stone over here. With the dove at the top. And I can't hardly Read Anderson 1910 to 1918, so an eight-year-old boy, oh, 18-year-old girl, Laura, uh, eight-year-old, Nancy Perry, wife of J.H. Taylor, and then here is Mr. Taylor. Now, there are a couple of very old Cairn burials over here that actually belong to the Edwards family. We'll get to those in a second. And if you grew up in Trussell, you would be familiar with the old Edwards house that is where Bojangles is now that was taken apart and moved out to uh, Tannehill Park. And when I actually do a Cemetery Saturday covering this, then... Um, when I do a cemetery Saturday covering this particular cemetery, I will actually cover the Edwards house and its disassembly and moving, which was quite the event. Here's a cover stone that has been smashed. Here is one of the unfortunate marked but not marked graves. I mean, you, can, you might not be able to pick it up in the video, but there is a depression in the ground where the grave actually is on the other side of this stone now this and here's another one here this cemetery has I believe somewhere around 150 burials in it 157 um, have I been to the dead children's playground yes I have heard about it but I have not actually been there and that is definitely on the uh, cemetery Saturdays when I get to it there are several outside of Jefferson County cemeteries that I want to cover uh, the death mask at I think it's actually called Mount Nebo also down way south here towards Auburn where a gentleman made death mask of the people that are in the graves and that is the gravestone uh, there is the children's playgrounds in the cemetery. There is the dollhouse. There is the playhouse and other very interesting things that I would be remiss not to cover. 
uh, but <coughs> I will have to get to those. Uh, Jenny Jenkins. The McCowans. Gilderoy. There's a name you don't hear outside of Harry Potter. Then here are... This is interesting. We have two cover stones and one smaller gravestone. The cover stones just have father and mother on them. And then the actual stone spans the two covers. And then here is a grave that just says baby. Ruby Fern, daughter of Mr. and Miss McGowan, who are, um, nope, not them. Uh, those are Sam's, so I don't know where the McGowan's are buried. Oh, right here, next to it. So, and then there is a little stone here, so that indicates that there is a, at least one, possibly two graves right there. All right, now here is where there probably at one time was a rock cairn, but all the rocks have been robbed out of it. So there is just still the outline and then this bit of the stone. And this is unfortunate because no idea who this person is, unless it's one of the Edwards, which are buried over here in those rock cairns. And I believe I just walked on an unmarked grave, which is unfortunate. I don't like doing that. Here's a very eroded stone. Has the dove at the top. And this would require chalking it to easily read. 1876 to 1879. There's a Woodsman of the World stone over here. This is not that one. Sarah Edwards. So of the Edwards family, 1884 to 1887. And then she has this interesting stump which is one of the Victorian cemetery gravestone symbols indicating a life cut short. And then next to the stump is a dead dove. Interesting symbology on this particular stone. Now this is the Woodland of the World stone. Over here, this is an Edward stone. Very fancy. The spanning arches of father and mother, Thomas and Mary Edwards. And then unnamed but sort of marked with just a rock graves. And these are probably Edwards' children. Woodsmen of the world, one of the fraternal orders, and this is the stone that they provided to their members. I do not know if the Woodsmen of the World are still active. I have not looked that up, but I've always kind of liked the standing uh, log on top of the four stacked logs routine. They get into the detail even carving in tree rings and splitting. Martha Hendricks, 1833 to 1911. An infant, they, they gave the infant a name, you know, not, just says 1901. And then another one, 1903 to 1904. So don't know how long this particular infant lived. Williamses, Samuel Jackson Williams, and Martha Perry, so I would presume they are probably husband and wife. They were born just a couple of years apart, but she died in the 30s, and she didn't die until 1950. Another stone with no name.
Benny Edwards. So, James Holmes. And then James Wolseley Morris. Okay, so James Holmes Morris. And then James Wolseley Morris. Hmm. And then over here is a Robert Morris. Oh well, yeah, the flowers are moving because there is a breeze right now. As you can see, the um, leaves are moving too. Uh, or, you know, spirits could be dancing around me and I don't have a chill, but I wouldn't mind one right now because it's kind of warm out here. Now here is an adult single grave and there's like a series of these. The stones are knocked over and leaning but you know at least they're not smashed assorted snake holes all right here's john edwards who was a world war one veteran there's an edwards who was a mason joseph edwards and then a single capped tomb. I actually asked um, Stuart over at Oak Hill Cemetery about these kind of capped stone tombs. And he said, yeah, if you just move the stone away, the coffin is just sitting there. Um, although one that's this old, probably dirt and water and such has washed into it. So there isn't going to be much left just some remnants um, but they don't when they do this they do not actually just fill in dirt these older ones if you if you take the stone off you'll probably see this where over a hundred years dirt has washed in and built up and right, here's the conjoined hands that you'll see on stones indicating that you know, they are loved. Daughter of Dr. John and Sarah Edwards. Now, Dr. Edwards was the gentleman who had the house that is now at Tannehill. And here comes the fire department. Here is a rather beaten up and abused stone. Mother Ophelia Haygood Latham, 1847 to 1889. And then here is a stone where you can see the ground has eroded away from this child's grave. Davis Meredith Latham. 1888 to 1888 so what uh january 29th to june 4th and then over here these are the old edwards graves these these cairn graves here these are probably the oldest graves in the cemetery Now, when I was here a decade ago, yep, okay, it is still. All right, here is Dr. Edwards himself. Um, and 1791 to 1848. And then Sarah Edwards, 1791 to 1858. And this one doesn't have a marked stone. There's the stone that, but it was never carved. Then here is a child of John and Martha that is so badly worn you cannot see the dates on it. And then William Edwards. 
18, uh, died 1864. 1840-something to 1864. And then this one. J.W. Edwards, born June the 7th, 18... I can't quite read it. And died July the something, 1864. I'll have to look these up on Find a Grave because I think all of this is on Find a Grave. There are some tree branches down possibly from the storms that came through a couple of days ago whole bunch of just unengraved stones that this indicates that there's a bunch of graves here but unfortunately there's no way to tell who unless somewhere in the cemetery records kept wherever they are there are um, there's a map which is highly unlikely because this kind of thing would own and here's like a bunch more this would only be included in like family bibles and stuff or family genealogies here is what appears to be a double cairn but it doesn't seem to have a marker of any kind since it's of the same quality as the Edwards graves over there I would presume it is an Ed double Edwards grave but there is no marker so I don't know here's one that's not in such good shape you know that it's got the capstone but it's been knocked askew because the cemetery was kind of neglected for a long time before the Cemetery Memorial Association took it over. Now over here seems to be a newer section. And including a very new grave. Because this is still an active cemetery. Mr. Doramus, World War II vet died in 83 and then this is obviously a new new grave 2015 Mr. Pond there is a several pond graves over here 2005 and such and Thomas I'm not so much going to do too many um, new um, cemeteries because the new cemeteries number one you know especially when you get into graves like that and like that people might still be seriously grieving I know that you know my own mother who passed away a couple of years ago I am twitchy about sometimes and it'll be a while before I go and do one of these for my own mother's grave. So that is pretty much the Mount Nebo Cemetery. Let's go over and pick up these older graves over here. There's some newer ones that are all up by the road. As you can see, there's this big expanse of nothing and I'm presuming that this is open space available for the Memorial Association okay these older graves are going to be the last ones for today uh, Jesse Santa Mary 1910 to 1910 here is Mary, 1889 to 1910, October 25th, 1910, July 28th, 1910. I don't know, she might have passed away from complications of childbirth. And then J.E. Malone, and he has all kinds of very faint shadow.
engravings on his stone, including the hands, and I'm not sure what that is. Hmm. All right, so that is Mount Nebo Cemetery. Thank you all for watching. Please give it the like and thumbs up, and it'll be posted over on my YouTube channel, and please go to Patreon and help uh, finance little things like this as I explore some of the more obscure cemeteries in town, not ones that are quite so obvious. Thank you. Finish.